Hey guys, this is Jonathan Lampel here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you something a little bit different than normal. Um, instead of having a regular step-by-step -step instructional video on, you know, how to make any sort of particle system or smoke effects, this is going to be a more abstract, um, artistic theory lesson. And I think that, you know, through what I've been studying over the last couple months, um, just kind of on my own, I've put together enough research to to share with you something that I think would really improve your renders. And you know, there's just so much I couldn't all put it into one video, so I just chose the number one thing that I think is super important and will absolutely help you improve your artistic abilities. So getting right into it, um, I was set out to answer the question, what makes a good CG image? You know, I think some people might say the modeling. You know, the modeling is definitely very important, but I would argue that it's not the most important thing because even if you have excellent, excellent modeling, your image can still look a little bit iffy. You know, even if you have super good modeling, you know, your animation might not necessarily turn out all that great. And even if you have average modeling, you can still have a really good image. You know, it might not be perfect, it might not be, you know, excellent, but it'll still look good enough for people to kind of do a double take and say, wow, that looks nice. So I would say that the answer is not modeling. And I would also say in the same way that it's not texturing. Texturing is very important but it's not the essential thing that you need. So do you say lighting? Well, this is getting a lot closer, but I would also say it's not the most essential thing. Uh, it's definitely a really good part of the process and you need to focus on lighting. Uh, a lot of people overlook lighting as their, you know, kind of last step before rendering or even before texturing, it depends on how you do your workflow. But I would say that it's not the most important thing, although it is a lot closer. Some people might say realism, and I would also disagree because, you know, realism can have its place. And if you have a real, really realistic image, that definitely shows that you have some talent. But just because it's realistic doesn't mean it's interesting. You know, even if you have it looking exactly like a photograph, you know, some photographs just don't look that good. Um, so while realism is very, very cool, it doesn't necessarily make your image good. So um, I will pass on realism. And some people also might say creativity. Now this is very close to what I'm thinking of, but it's still not quite right. Uh, creativity is just kind of a means to an end. And I'll talk about a little bit more about creativity at the end and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I would say that the most important thing is composition. Now before I tell you the you know, number one tip that I've found uh, through my research and through just kind of studying, I would, uh, I'm going to explain composition for you so that you know what I'm talking about when I get there. Otherwise, it'll be a little bit confusing. So, first off, what is composition? Well, composition, according to the all-knowing Wikipedia, is the arrangement of visual elements in a work of art. So, um, this includes your subject placement, your camera angle, your contrast, uh, all those different things where it's not necessarily your objects in your scene but it's how they work together to create a final image um, it's how the light bounces off of it it's how the um, it's all the little details inside it's kind of encompasses the whole thing uh, what you see is the composition so a good way to think about it actually is uh, you know the little thumbnails you see on the left side um, when you're going through things like CG Society and Blender Artists um, that are kind of the preview that's basically what the composition is. It's um, how your scene is set up. When you see the little tiny thumbnail, you know, you can see what the scene basically is. You don't see all the details, but you see the overall shapes of the scene. So I think that's a good explanation of what composition is. And you might ask, why is it so important? Well, um, actually studying composition is essentially studying what makes a picture visually interesting. So the more you learn about composition, the more your work will attract attention. Because basically the goal of composition is to make your work look better. Um, you know, is you're basically studying what makes my work look good and how can I get there? And I think that's absolutely essential for any kind of artist, whether you're a modeling artist, texturing artists, rendering artist, um, even with, you know, compositing artists, it doesn't matter what you are, you still need to know the basics of composition, uh, in my opinion, in order to improve your work. So, you know, you might get more, you might get better at the technical skills, but 
there's still it comes a level where you definitely need to know about the artistic side or the composition of your image before it'll you know get past that extra extra brick wall if you will so the first step to having a better composition is just to find out more about it and I don't honestly I don't have time to go over it right now but here's some resources that you can go to uh, so basically just get an understanding of what composition is and the different kinds of rules and uh, hints that it gives you to making a better image so I'd suggest going to controlpaint.com definitely one of the best resources I've seen where you know he goes over all sorts of different things like visual weight contrast and things that are absolutely essential to making better artwork so definitely check out his videos I'll link to them in the description below and uh, definitely definitely check them out second photography books and articles the more you read about photography or you know even other types of art the more you will learn about your own type of art that you're dealing with so uh, honestly like I was looking into color theory uh, something else that I've been researching and I was taken to all sorts of different things on like interior design and things like that so um, those you know honestly my CG artwork doesn't have anything to do with interior design but by learning about it I now can apply those to my trade um, so I definitely say that expanding your kind of artistic horizons will absolutely help you in the long run. So the second step is to take what you've learned and apply that to your own work. So you may have heard about visual weight and so you might think about that as you're setting up your next render and just keeping these things in mind will definitely help you down the road. But how do you do that necessarily? Well, I am glad you asked because Here's the number one tip that I have for a good composition to make your image look better and just to get kind of people get people's attention uh, when they look at it and that is to pick a subject then forget what it is. Now this is kind of an abstract statement and you might say you know that makes about zero sense. Well let me break it down for you. Pick a subject is having a clear focus um, to your image and that's absolutely critical because you know if your picture doesn't uh, doesn't have any focal point or focus then there's not really there's not really any point to your image um, you know if you have all sorts of different random objects placed around or even if they look good um, if you don't have something that the viewer is going to focus on they're going to get bored and they're going to look away and they're not really going to care so get rid of all of the clutter uh, get rid of all of the things that aren't necessary you know if there's little um, I don't know, dots of light or something on all on the bottom right hand of your image, then just get rid of it because it's really distracting. Or if you have, you know, some super bright light or if you have some random thing that, you know, may have taken a lot of time and it maybe looks kind of cool, but if it's distracting from your focus, then get rid of it um, because that'll definitely help improve your image because, you know, people are going to be more interested when it has a clear, concise focus. So... Uh, even if your focus is kind of like in the case of a landscape, you know, you have the mountains, you have the ocean, um, but your focus then is the landscape itself. So maybe you don't have to focus on one particular mountain range, or maybe you do, um, but in that case, then your focus is the overall you know, part of the image. But for the most part, you're going to want to pick one subject and kind of stick with it, even if that subject is... Um, kind of multiple things. I, I hope that makes sense. So if you don't have a subject, there's not really any point to your image. And while it might show some very cool technical skills, then, you know, people in the long run aren't going to care. And that's just, that's just the fact of it. Um, and the second part of this, forget what it is, is treat it as if it's abstract. Now, this is something that has definitely helped me improve my renders for sure, where you know, say I'm making an office chair, and my goal is to, you know, I'm going to make an office chair. And I go about modeling, and I go about texturing, and I go about, you know, sculpting it, adding in detail, adding bump maps, rendering it, lighting it, whatever. But if my goal is simply to make an office chair, then it's going to be very boring, because everybody knows what an office chair looks like. Nobody's going to care. Even if it, you know, it might be realistic or whatever, and people might say, wow, that's realistic. Uh, it's not really going to have any point to it. So by treating it as if it's abstract, 
you're using composition and concepts of design instead of the subject to portray the story that you want to tell. So instead of looking at it as in, you know, here's, here's the chair, um, think about it of what do I want this chair to tell and completely forget that there's a chair there at all and just pretend that the chair, the desk, whatever it is, is just made up a bunch of shapes and use those shapes to tell whatever story you want. So, for instance, if you have a product and you say, I want to make this product look impressive, uh, forget what the product is. It doesn't necessarily matter what the product is, but use the shapes of your subject to tell the story. And this forces you to think of what your image is saying or what you're trying to tell, what kind of story you have behind it. Because if you don't have any story, then it's just, it's just pointless. So um, I would argue that if you treat your subjects as if they're you know, if you treat your whole image as if it's just an abstract piece of art, just splotches of color, then it will absolutely help you um, because you'll be telling your story not just through the subject, but you'll end up telling it through the composition. You'll end up telling it in a much more powerful way on a much deeper level than you would have if you just say, here's a subject and I, you know, it looks kind of good. But if you take the time, treat it as if it's just a bunch of objects, bunch of shapes, bunch of colors, um, then you're definitely going to get rid of the familiar feeling. So the rest is all up to your creativity. And you might be thinking, well, that sucks because I'm not creative at all. You know, that's a, lo th thought, a thought a lot of people have. But I would say that, yes, you are. Maybe you just don't know it. And the fact is, trying to make your composition better will force you to think outside the box. It, it totally will. Because you might say, oh, this image, you know, I have this camera angle, whatever, but there are just visual tangents everywhere. And that's another video from Control Paint, so go look that up if you don't know what that is. And you might say, well, how can I get rid of these visual tangents? So you move move around the elements in your scene, you move around your camera, and all of a sudden you have a composition which you never would have thought of that's completely unique and looks much better. And, you know, somebody might look at that and say, wow, that's creative. And I say, well, no, not really. I just kind of had to. But the fact is, that is creative because you were you're using the rules and you're using them in the right way, and it just turns out much better. So here's the paradox: is that the restrictions in this case are freeing. Now this is kind of a universal paradox, and I would say that the more you understand about composition, the more you can express yourself through art. So if I can kind of give an example, I would say this is like playing the piano, where I cannot play any musical instrument. That's just a fun fact about me. If I sat down at a piano and started smashing away on keys, it would sound like trash. But if I had a friend who was really good at playing piano and he sat down, he knows what notes sound good together, he knows what you know keys to press at what time, and he could make something sound absolutely beautiful. And so by using those restrictions and by restricting himself to using only what goes good together, he can make something a lot more compelling than I can. He could make something sad, he could make something happy, it doesn't matter, I would just make noise. And that is absolutely the same concept as in art. So, you know, others will think you are creative, even if you don't think you're creative yourself, uh, other people will. Here's an example, you make a you know living room and you just have some decorations there, and somebody says, hey, those are really creative. And you might think to yourself, well, they're actually there because I needed a complementary color and you know just kind of fit and I needed that sort of shape I need more you know horizontal lines whatever it is they're they're not really there cuz it's creative they're just there because I needed something that looked like that but the fact is that is what creativity is and you don't need to tell them that so thanks for watching I hope you learned something um, I would definitely like to see you improve this has definitely been helping me improve and I've been studying a lot of you know, composition color theory and overall just how to make a better image. So if you're interested in this topic, uh, if you also want to learn how to make better renders, how to make better animations, um, let me know because I'm thinking about doing more, maybe not necessarily videos, but maybe like an ebook or something, uh, just describing how to make compelling or good looking or attractive images. So if you're interested, definitely let me know and I will think about it. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.